Soul Naked, your podcast all about embodied healing and sacred sensuality. I am Tanya Hirsch and this podcast is intended to guide you home to your truth and feminine power. Each episode is designed to inspire you to create a pleasure-filled life that is in alignment with your soul. Let's drop the mask and dive right in. Our infinity. Our divinity. Welcome back, my loves, to the Soul Naked podcast. I'm so excited to share this interview with you today with Mia Magic. If you've heard about her already, you know that she's an amazing modern witch that brings the ancient wisdom into the modern days. She has witch schools. She does Hogwarts retreats and castles. She really created her life built upon magic. And you can read her whole bio in my in the link in, in the description below. She's an amazing human being, an embodied witch with so much wisdom that she shares a part of it in this podcast interview. We talked about all the things, her story, how she became Mia Magic, about all the years that she's forgotten her magic, about the truth of abundance, about the connection to the earth and why it's so important we remember that we are part of her so we can really reclaim our power and to feel abundant, to magnetize everything we desire rather than chasing another big thing on the outside. We talked about many, many beautiful things. It was a wild conversation, but the essence is how to source your power from within. And you can learn it from a real witch. So I can't wait to share this interview with you. And before we dive in, I have an announcement to make. And in less than two weeks in February, we will start with Soul Let My Mastermind. Maybe you've joined my free immersion last weekend where we gathered as women to awaken our feminine power and you already feel the spark inside of you that you're here for more, that you're someone to make a difference, that you're already impacting people with your magic. And so let the mastermind is for you to step into your next level of leadership to really, I always make the image, if your purpose is tapping on your shoulder and you're like, you can come, but I don't want to do all the scary things. I'm the one turning your head towards your purpose. So you fully embrace it. You open your heart to it. You fully devote to be in service with all the changes that are necessary. And so let is a safe transformational container with other women on the same journey as you. So all of us are stepping into our next level of feminine leadership, of heart-centered leadership. Then you're in the right place. We will turn your little flame inside of you into an erupting volcano so you don't hold back sharing your gifts so you can make a living, an abundant living out of your gifts to use it to, to make this world a better place. And every single one of us has different gifts. Maybe your gift is to be an artist and to evoke emotions in people that they can't access themselves. Maybe you're a natural leader and space holder and people feel safe in your presence to open up. Maybe you can help them with your story to overcome certain things. There's so many different paths of how this could show up every single woman has healing abilities and all of us have these unique gifts that we that are waiting to be shared and if we have layers of trauma and conditioning around us it can be very hard to fully step into it because the the mind the ego can be very strong fears can feel very real and so let is a four-month container where we will meet twice a month to dive really deep into your next level of embodied feminine leadership. So you can not only feel abundant, but also receive the money you need to make this world a better place. And we will have Voxer support where we will always stay connected and we end with a three-day retreat. So if this is calling your name, the early bird special is still open, which means the retreat is still included for free, which is an amazing offer that I can offer you right now. And if you feel the calling, just send me a message. I want to hop on a call if I don't know you personally, so we can make this group align and to see if this is really a perfect match for both of us and the rest of the group, because it's going to be a small group, maximum 11 women. So without further ado now, let's dive into the episode with Mia Magic. 
So welcome to the Soul Naked podcast, Mia. I'm so excited to dive so naked with you today. Bless. Thanks for having me, love. Happy to be here. So the first question I ask out of my podcast guests is, what does soul naked mean for you right now? Mm. For me, soul naked right now is just about being completely embodied in my devotion to the goddess, being transparent in the challenge while owning the power and the magic and the beauty and being fully expressed, being completely open to, yeah, just the words that need to be spoken, being a vessel for the earth and for the great mother that's been, you know, forgotten from so much of our programming and our society and our religion. And that's, that's like really my naked soul is just knowing that I'm a voice for the earth and, and speaking mm -hmm. on her behalf as much as I can and, and not shying away from the things that need to be said. Mm, I loved it. And you really, you are on a big mission. You really embody. <laughs> <laughs> I am indeed. It's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> indeed. So for those who don't know you, Mia Magic is your name that, that you're known for. How was this name built and how is it connected to your story? Oh, it's such a great question. So I started my journey obviously many years ago and I got, you know, it started with yoga and meditation and little things like that. And then I met this woman who was like, oh, I'm into some pretty witchy shit. And I was like, you're at Burning Man. I had just moved to LA. I'm like, okay, cool. I don't really know what that means, but great. And she ended up taking me to many different things. My first breath work class, my first ayahuasca ceremony. And one of the ceremonies that we went to was 5-MeO DMT, full God consciousness, deepest medicine that I've ever experienced times like 4,000. And the medicine itself was so powerful, but the ceremony leading up to receiving the medicine It was a three and a half hour intention setting based on the tarot, based on the elements, based on alchemy and, and ancient ceremonial magical practices. And I'd never seen anything like that. And so the medicine itself was full blast off deep God consciousness and everyone went individually. So you had your own time. It was like a full day experience. But what really stuck with me was, oh my goddess, there's people doing magic. They, this is, they believe in it. This is not just my Harry Potter fantasy. This is, this is real for them. This, these hours of, of talking about the elements and all of these things, this is real. And it just ignited something inside of me. And then magic was pretty much all I could talk about. And, and I would use, I wasn't trained in Reiki yet. And so I would use the word magic for the universal consciousness that was flowing through me. And that's when I started doing healing work. I was like, do you want some magic? Do you want to experience some magic? Can I do some magic on you? And I was just, I, I, you know, when you first start your spiritual journey, it's pretty much all you can talk about. And you're just so excited and so lit up. And so <laughs> that was me. And I started just doing magic sessions on people, which was like energy work and healing. And, um, one, friend of mine, started calling me Mia magic and we happened to live next door to each other. And so I would come over, he was a trainer. So I'd come over for workouts and there would be this big group of people. And he would always go Mia magic. Like every time I walked <laughs> in and at first I was kind of like, Oh, I don't know if I want to take this on, but Mia means mine. And in Spanish and Italian, my dad's Italian. And so whenever anyone would say Mia magic, they're implying that they have magic it means my magic. And so I, I really saw that as like, wow, they're, you know, it's not about me. It's about anytime anyone says my name, they're saying my magic, my magic, my magic, my magic. I'm like, okay, this works for me. This is beautiful mm -hmm. and amazing. And then finally one day, you know, someone asked me, they were like, Mia, what is your last name? And a girlfriend that I'd known for years was like, oh my God, I can't even remember your real last name. <laughs> and I told her and, and she just looked at me and she was like, girl, you need to change your Instagram. Like, this is who you are now. You're me magic. You just need to accept it. Let's, let's go. 
And, um, yeah, from that moment on, it was like, okay, this is the, this is the moniker. And, um, and, and it does, it feels really right to know that I'm holding a frequency of giving people permission to claim that they have magic too. Mm, I love that story so much. Thank you for sharing. And I feel every single person has magic, has this connection to the divine, and it's just up to us to release the layers to remember And I'm curious, before we dive deeper into the conversation, was there a time in your life where you were disconnected from your magic, where you couldn't remember that you were divine? I mean, the Bufo experience I've just came out three weeks ago was mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mind blowing is about the, yeah. I mean, it's completely inevitable. You can't describe that. Yeah. I could, it's been nowhere. seven hours trying to describe it to someone and until you, until you experience there's no it, there's, there's no word. Yeah. Um, the ineffable all. But um, yeah. I would say most of my life was like that. That's why, that's why the mission is so important for me right now. That's why I value who and what and where I am and what I'm creating now so much. Um, because yes, my whole life, pretty much from the time that I entered public school, I went to private school as a little kid, like very hippie Northern California. It was called Equinox before the gym. You know, it was like singing songs in the afternoon and drawing pictures and doing plays and going on camping trips. It was a very alternative type of school. We still learned all the same things, but, um, but very involved, beautiful, you know, young childhood education. And then I went to public school and it was like, you're a loser theaters for losers. Everything about you is a loser. We hate you. We're going to bully you. And, and I just, shut down every single part of who I was and who I had been of my truth. Um, the big moment was like, we wrote an assignment was to write a story about your future. And then there was a night where everyone was reading different pieces of writing that they'd read or written throughout the year. And I decided to share my future story in front of the class. And that was not a good idea because I knew the life that was coming for me. I've known since I came out, I knew from the moment I arrived on this planet, what I was here for, not specifically in relationship to magic, but in relationship to helping, healing, big platforms, you know, speaking to, to create a more magical world. I didn't know you could be a professional witch and like the modern day. <laughs> um, so I wasn't sure that that would be how it was going, but, but I always knew. And when I wrote that story, I mean, it was like, I had no friends after that. And so from that moment on, from being like 11 or 12 years old until my early twenties, when I <laughs> remember like asking him like, what is time? You know, I just started having those kind of questions that you ask and you're like, wow, I've been asleep caring about material things and being accepted by the popular girls and like Prada backpacks and stuff. And I haven't even taken the time to ask deeper questions or to understand even what I think or believe about what's happening in, in the world, in the universe, in this reality around me. And so, yeah, it was many years, like a decade of just full sleeping and, and agony. Really. I was, I was existentially miserable because I had shut down who I really was because I had turned off the magic because I said, Oh, magic isn't real. I'll just believe in what these muggles have to say and what they say about me and what they believe to be true about me. So yeah, I had a, a, I was deeply depressed. I also was in a really bad accident when I was 16. I almost lost my arm, um, was like about to become an amputee. And luckily a miracle came and saved me. Um, but then that also sort of reinforced, oh, there's something wrong with me. Now I was deformed and disfigured and ugly and all of these things that made me feel like, wow, the universe is even less on my side or like I'm even less allowed to be who I am. Now I need to shut down more and be quieter. And now life was really hard. I literally couldn't use my arm for uh, like about three years. And now I, I have some function still, but, um, but just not the same way. And it just, you know, when you don't understand that everything is for you and everything is offering a growth opportunity, everything is, is inviting you forward into someone bigger and better and stronger. When something like that happens, when tragedy strikes your life, that's what it feels like. It feels like a tragedy. And so that led me into a deep spiral of depression and just like deep challenges with mental health and, you know, all the different 
prescription pills that they put 16 year olds on. And luckily I was, I was aware enough to be like, look, I would rather feel sad than feel nothing. And so, um, I didn't, I didn't stay on the, the meds for very long, but it was, yeah, it was a, it was a dark time for me in my teenage years. And, um, and, and ultimately, you know, one of my therapists said to me, but, that time, that amount of pain is actually the source of your magic. That's what motivated you to your magic. Because if you hadn't had that, you could have just sort of like skated through life, but knowing the depths of, of heartache and agony that it is to not feel connected to your divinity, to not feel connected to your magic is what drove me so fervently to, to find it and to rediscover it for myself. Mm. I just had goosebumps because I feel this is the essence. This is where we source our power and we remember who we are in the depths when we think we can't step one foot further in the yeah. deepest mud when we just want to collapse. That's when we rise to the surface again and we see our light and we see the beauty and the love. And I I had a similar story um, only this year. And I feel it comes in waves. Sometimes we yeah. forget and then we remember. And then this year I went really deep and it felt like it doesn't stop. And I feel the more resistance we put into these moments, the more we are like, no, the universe is against me. I want this a, a different way. And the harder it gets. But the moment we surrender is always the moment when it gets easy and easy, when it gets easier and we can see the light. And yeah. I'm curious in your journey, when you went through the stark, these dark years that seem really isolated also, like almost alienated, where you felt like you don't belong and you don't fit in and you tried to fit in and even that wasn't good enough. And then you lost your magic. And then when was the moment you finally remembered? Was it when you went to this woman that was witchy or did it start before already that you remembered like, oh, there's so much more to me than the version I am embodying right now? You know, it, it was conceptual before that. Like I, I knew I had discovered, okay, I want, I want to see more, do more, be more, you know, I think yoga is such a beautiful, accessible point for a lot of people to start on their journey because it's physical. So you feel like, oh, I'm exercising and I'm, you know, but the, <laughs> those little moments where the teacher would read a quote at the end of the class that was exactly what I needed to hear. You know, it was like those little things had started happening. But after I went to Burning Man um, and where I met this woman, and then she started bringing me to all of these things. And then I met my tribe. I met like my soul family and the people that I've been, you know, rolling hard with for, for many years now on the spiritual path and on the journey. Uh, you know, that, that was really the moment where things started to change. But I feel like yeah, it was, it was really gradual for me. It wasn't, it wasn't a boom, like instantly a light bulb goes off and everything changes. It was a, it was a step-by-step -step process. And like you said, it does ebb and flow. There are still lots of moments where there are challenges and there is heartache and, and there's, you know, existential resistance and frustration. But, um, but yeah, I, I feel like also for me, the, the accident that I shared about, I, covered up the scar that I have. Like you can see this hand doesn't quite function the same way. And I covered this scar up for many years. Like I wore a black sleeve over it. Just like no one can see it. I'm hiding. I would like hide it in pictures. You know, if I was like with a man, I would never use it or touch him with it. It was like not part of me. I'd fully dissociated it from myself. And that year I'd also had the experience of a miracle that happened where I, I had, I had the little sleeve with me. I was going to a party. I had, I was wearing a sweater like this, so no one could see it, but I was like going to go into the party and put the thing on. And it just dematerialized from my reality. And I had, you know, 10 or 11 of them and, and they all just disappeared from my reality. And I was sobbing, trying to go into this party, like, Oh my God, Oh my God, I can't let anyone see me. And my friend was like, it's okay. You know, we don't have to go. And I just heard this little voice. It was like, Mia, enough, enough. Now this is done. You got to stop. And so I just walked into the party and no one even noticed. And I was like, you know, when you have the story, you have this perception, you have this belief 
that something is so true and something is so wrong with you. And like, no one will ever love you with this. And then (laughs) no one gave a shit. No one even (laughs) like the first thing this girl said to me, she's like, Oh my God, I love your bikini. And I'm like, can't you see I'm deep? <laughs> like just nothing. And, and that moment, that was really the big, and that was right before I went to Burning Man. So then I went to Burning Man, this, you know, massive, crazy, wild festival in, in the desert of Nevada. That's all about full radical expression and, and, you know, being exactly who you want to be and speaking your truth and d- dressing in your wildest things. And so that happened just before. And in that moment, I realized if this has been a belief that I've had for almost a decade and it's not true, it doesn't show up as true for anyone else in my reality. It's just a story I'm telling myself. What else is like that? What else might I be wrong about? What other miracles might be able to occur if I just let them or if I just, you know, release the grasp that I have on like what I think is true and also my pain. You know, it was like, I was believing in something that hurt me in something that dragged me down and made me feel awful about myself. And so, um, you know, to see that that was not true, that just completely opened my eyes. And I believe that's why then like burning man and this witchy woman and the ceremonies and all these things happened within the, the six months following that, because I was willing to open my eyes. I was willing to see the world in a different way. And sometimes, you know, it takes the world showing itself. It's like seeing is believing and sometimes believing becomes seeing, you know, mm. there's so much wisdom in just the story that you shared. And I feel It, we can translate that to everything in life, everything we outsource. Like I, I used to have dermatitis all over my body as a, as a teenager. And every time it happened, I didn't leave the house and I thought I'm less worthy and I would just hide. If I had to leave the house, I would cover it. And then I realized anything external is not true. A true beauty comes from within and that's in direct correlation. When we discover that our true divinity is already there beyond the layers and we release the stories why we think we are less worthy because someone said something or because we saw something on tv this can be enough that we believe this is the truth and to release the stories to see our beauty our worth our power nothing can be outsourced in the long term it will always try to come to fill this hole inside and then at one point it will leak again and we will look for the next thing that's why many women are addicted to to um surgery They think if they have these lips, then I will feel pretty. And then they have it and they're like, oh, maybe just the, the fillers. And then it's fine. And same with cl- clothes and cars. If only I have this car, the bigger house, whatever it is, the partner, everything we externalize, yeah. we will be disappointed because it can only be found from within. So I'm curious, after going on this white journey to Burning Man and then doing Bufo and all these plant medicines, How did this change your reality? What, where did you stop outsourcing your worth, your beauty, everything? Oh, well, I think that's, I think sourcing love for yourself is, is a practice. I think that that is, you know, that's why I, I was mentioning to you before, like I'm, I have designed this new program that's about all the steps all the elemental steps, all the daily, weekly practices, because it is a practice. There are going to be days where you don't feel that beautiful, you know? Um, but I think that, that sourcing the power, how I learned to do that was like by connecting with the elements. So I, I started studying ceremonial magic after that experience with Bufo. And one of the, the, um, rituals they do it's called the elemental platform and you see yourself stepping onto this platform and you feel i am earth and you start with your roots and it's like about and up to your knees and then i am water and it's to your womb or your your you know sort of sexual organ area i am air and you breathe the the breath into your lungs and then i am fire it's the light of our minds of our brains our neurons firing you know whether you see the sun above you and i was living in venice at the time and i would just go to the ocean every day 
and just weep at the beauty of the sunset, just weep. But also, you know, that moment, you know, you live on a, on a beach on the ocean, that moment where the water is coming in. And so there's, there's the sand that's solid on the ground, but then there's the sand that's moving from the water. And then there's the sand that's sort of in the water. And then there's the water. And then there's the reflection of the light itself on it. And just see, and then there's like, the air and then the actual sky and then the sun, you know, and, and just seeing that this simple magical expression of, Oh, I am also these elements. I am this elemental platform. I am, you know, reality is like this. There's like the earth plane and then there's like what's moving around on it. And then what's like swirling in the energy and then like, okay, the energy itself. And then the reflection of the, you know, and it just, it was this beautiful visual representation of, of sort of a new, layered expression of reality. I was like, oh, it isn't just this 3D realm. And so connecting to that elemental energy within myself, seeing it ex expressed every day in front of me in the ways that the waves would flow and then working with, okay, if I know that I am one with all of this, I am that sand, I am that water, I am this breath, I am that fire. And I just started cultivating a relationship with the earth and with the elements and with knowing that like that, you know, I'm looking out on this snowy landscape and the trees covered in white, everything. It's just like full winter wonderland out here. And the beauty that I feel, the reverence that I feel to the earth, the awe and wonder that I experience just, I mean, you're in Tahiti, like, you know, every <laughs> moment I'm like, oh my God, is this is incredible. And so my, my practice and, and what was the essence of coming into love of myself was knowing that if I love her, if I love the earth, if I love this planet, if I love this natural beauty, then by default, I have to love myself because I'm a reflection of it. I, I'm, I'm the same. We're, we're expressed differently, but I'm the same as that. And so that's what really became the essence of my, my personal spiritual practice was deep earth magic, connecting with the planet, connecting with the mother, mother nature, mother earth, this, this feminine energy, this goddess that, that I believe, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious, like she's been taken out of, of religion and, and that the church has really suppressed and, and cut off. And I always recommend reading the alphabet versus the goddess. That's like my favorite book. Um, and I have a deep synchronicity because the man that wrote it took a sabbatical from the hospital where I had all of my surgeries on my arm when I was 16. And I didn't even know that this was like a realm of, of existence that I could study. And he was like on sabbatical during that time when I was in the hospital and he was the head of surgery there, which is just so crazy. And now he's like my hero. Unfortunately, he died before oh. I could, but I love him and Leonard Schlein. So I'll that versus the goddess is an amazing book to read about how this happened. But, you know, that's, that's what allows me to love myself. And that's why with my own practices and with the practices that I'm, I'm sharing in this new program, you know, it's all about using the infinite sources of power, the resources that are present in the universe at all times. And, and like, yes, okay, like you could, someone could say like, oh, but it's outside of you. If you like do a bathing ritual or you do a sun gazing experience or you, you know, go and connect with the earth. I'm like, but it isn't because it is you. Like the bones in our body are the stones in the mountains. The blood in our veins is like waters in the rivers. The breath in our lungs is the wind in the trees. And like I said, our neurons are firing. There is this electricity pumping through us in order to keep us going and not plugged into anything. And so that's, that's really, I believe what, the source of internal radiant beauty is, is remembering that any beauty we see outside of ourselves also can exist within ourselves as long as we, we choose to see it and we reclaim the power that has convinced us otherwise. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, yes, yes. I love that so much. And I, I always say to my women that when they feel disconnected from themselves and they forgot how beautiful and divine they are, I feel the biggest teacher is nature. Just spend time in nature without your phone for a week or two and you will realign to the frequency that is you, that is your natural state of being. But we are so cons like bombarded with artificial things, with radiation, with even when we walk on rubber shoes, that's not natural for us. We, we are supposed to feel the earth, to feel her. Of course, we can't feel her if we spend all of our times in front of a screen. And mm -hmm. I had this 
magical moment. I was guiding a, re uh, a training two weeks ago in Costa Rica and I was sitting naked on a river after a little morning dip and the sun was shining up on me. And I always understood the concept of, you know, that we are all one and what you just said, that we are the river and we are the stones, but I could never really feel it. I, I understood it logically, but I didn't really get it. And then I was sitting on the stone and I cried I think for 30 minutes straight because for the first time I could feel that the same spirit is us like the same spirit that makes the water flow and that creates the stones it's within us it is us but I could never feel it before and then I suddenly I just remembered all the years that I couldn't remember and then just it was this pivotal moment where I just remembered how could I forget you know <laughs> like the beauty the the power the, it's almost like this the i can feel the plants the spirit of the plants it's all the same spirit that created us that makes our heart beat that makes everything work in our body it's a magical system that we take for granted so many times yeah and i yeah. asked that same question when i went back to do the bufo again after six months i was bawling and i looked at the he's not i call him the wizard not the shaman so you know he's like the wizard <laughs> And, um, and I looked at him just weeping and I said, how could I forget? How <laughs> yeah. could I forget? Cause I just done it six months ago. I became God. Like, how could I forget? <laughs> and he goes, we're designed to forget we're designed to forget. That's the whole point. That's why yeah. this journey is so fulfilling and uplifting because we're designed to forget. So when we allow ourselves to remember, like, it's a whole new world. Yeah. And it's, having, and it's hard. Being a soul, having a human experience gets a whole new perspective when you really feel that, when you feel you are a soul and you have emotions and it's also a privilege. That's something I learned in my last ayahuasca ceremony that, you know, sometimes we take life for granted and we, we don't really want to be here if there's heavy emotions coming. And then I was like, we are the only planet where we can have emotions, where we have skin, where we can feel heat, where we feel love and connection and I came back and I was like, oh my God, this body is such a gift. And I couldn't stop hugging and kissing myself. And every day since then, I mean, of course there's days where, you know, where we have yeah. waves, but I'm like, it's such a privilege and it would be selfish to not fully step into our purpose and our, to do what we came here to do, because it is so precious. So it's aligning up. I was speaking to souls in, in different galaxies and they were like, oh, you're on planet earth. Oh my God. That's so amazing. We want to be there. And we like human life, a body, like whatever we take it for granted, but to remember every day, the food that we get, the sunlight, the ocean, even if just this tiny flower, it's a miracle. And it's the universe being in that. And that's why we can see the beauty. I, I had years where I looked at a flower and I couldn't see the beauty. I knew it was beautiful, but I didn't feel it. And now sometimes I could cry looking at a flower because it's so divine and it <laughs> reflects the beauty of every woman, every person, every soul on this planet. Yeah. Yes. That's it. So that's why this, this program sorceress and I'm spelling it like S O U R C E R O U S because the source actually the word comes from French and it means to rise and it's like rising into that remembrance, rising into that power, flowing up and out, like being, you know, like the source of the water in the mountain. And then when we use O-U-S, it means to be full of. And so it's like, what would it be like to, to rise into our fullness, to truly allow ourselves to be in awe of this miracle of life and connect with every single part of not only the elements, but of just like our minds, our voices, our hearts, our pussies, our pleasure, all the different parts, all the little magical possibilities that exist just inside the human body. It's just, yeah, I'm, I'm like super lit up about it because I've just been, I'm like, okay, these are all the practices over the last decade that have completely transformed my life. Like, let's go. What's it going to be like if I just like <laughs> dose the whole, you know, feminine consciousness with all of this magic. And, and I just, yeah, like, I think that that's, one of the biggest challenges that we experience in life is just forgetting that everything is a miracle because then it's really easy to 
you know, disregard your, your impact on the planet, which is another huge part of it. It's like, if you're sourcing your beauty products from a certain place that has a certain energy that has a certain vibration, and then you're putting that on your body into your body, you're the earth. It's the same as like, if we're toxifying the earth, right. Then we can poison the soil. We can poison the water, but we don't realize that this is the earth and this is the water and we can poison those things too, just like the plastic, you know, it's all, it's all so interconnected. And so there's, it's such a beautiful gift to witness how deeply, if we care for ourselves, if we tend to ourselves, if we care for the earth, if we tend to the earth, the way that life just becomes a miracle, even in the mundane moments, It's just like, this is a miracle. I'm breathing. That's a miracle. And that's what, you know, I was sharing about that for my new year's day ritual yesterday. That was really exactly it. It was like, I just want to feel the deep embodied appreciation of the miracle and magic of my life. I don't need to do anything big. I don't need to do anything crazy. I just want to feel deeply grateful Mm. that I get to be here doing this, being who I am in love with this amazing man who loves who I am, who's so patient with me and lets me be a fucking wild dragon. And, <laughs> and in a, you know, in a community of people who are devoted to the same path in different ways, you know, it's just, it's a miracle. <laughs> mm, it truly is. And that's why the more we connect with earth, I feel there's no way we can still treat our mother like this. If you know that you are her, you, you wouldn't drink poison. So why would you put it on the earth? And it, you begin to see all those things that are really a shit show in this world and how much is out of alignment and out of harmony, how much the human, uh, yeah. I yeah, could cry I, if I got too deep into this. Bro, I know that we're like, <laughs> okay, let's put a skirt around that one. But yeah, I'm glad that you, you said it and brought it in because it is, you know, that's one of the, the pieces that I think gets lost in the spiritual community is like, we understand that we need to honor mother earth. We, again, conceptually, right. You and I both mentioned a moment where like, I understood the idea, but I didn't know how to integrate it. I didn't know how to embody it. I didn't know how to really put it into practice. And I think that that's one of the biggest pieces. And that's a a lot of different ways that there are invitations um, in, in sorceress is like, really looking at, like you said, if you wouldn't drink poison, then why are you using poison in your shower? Why are you using poison on your dishes? Why are you using poison in your laundry? You know, why are you feeding your cats poison or whatever it is, right? Like there's so many ways that, that we just don't pay attention to that really actually do vibrationally affect not only humanity's relationship to earth, but that affect our levels of abundance. Like that's the way that I started making money and like really built my business and have had, you know, like, I mean, it's a miracle to have a seven figure business, like just based on magic and working four hours a week. It's like, it's a miracle. And I know that I have that and that that came into my life and that I magnetized that level of financial abundance because I am reverent to the earth, because I don't buy things from Amazon, because I don't buy new clothes or new furniture. Like I buy everything used or secondhand, unless it's like made handmade by some craftsman, by some person who, you know, spun this pottery on a wheel themselves or like put these little beetle wings. My earrings are, this earring is made out of beetle wings. And this guy has this little farm where the beetles, you know, are part of the compost and the regenerative agriculture. And then they die naturally. And it's like these hard twinkly little beautiful green and purple. And then like, after they're dead, he takes the wings and makes earrings out of them, you know? And he was like all excited telling me about it. And I'm like, yes, this is amazing. I'm a, I'm a full fuck yes to supporting something like this. And, and I think that that's really the piece that, that we forget about is we think that like, oh, these material um, goals or these material markers, like this is what means my success. This is what means that I've made it. This is what means that I'm, you know, abundant or that I'm safe or whatever it is. And for me, cultivating a relationship with 
understanding that the true source of abundance is life itself is like the beauty of the great green earth. And the fact that, you know, despite poisoning her and mistreating her and, you know, ravaging her for her resources for what's like rising from within her, she still keeps growing. Like acorns keep falling and, and flowers keep blossoming and bunnies keep being born. You know, she is the source of all life, which is the true nature of abundance. And when we tune into that frequency and when we are aligned with the true nature of abundance, not the abundance that's actually being sold to us, that's, that's underlying energy is actually scarcity It's actually like you need this in order to become this, or you need to have that in order to have people see you and perceive you a certain way. When we connect with the truth, when we are deeply in alignment with the earth, like that's what she, she asked that of me. She said, Hey, if you want to be my daughter, if you want to be a devotee to me, the way that you say you do, then you can't be just like going into the furniture stores like everybody else. You can't be buying things from Amazon the way that everyone else does, because that's not good for me. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Okay. You're right. Sorry. Let me adjust my habits as much as I possibly can. And when I did that, every moment that I got more and more serious about it, that's, I just watched my financial well-being just grow and rise just like a forest, you know? And it was mm-hmm. like, and it's not just about money, of course, but it's, it, it, I truly believe that that is the alignment and the frequency of abundance. And when we recognize that and can be grounded in that and connected with that, then everything, all the facets of abundance are magnetized into your life, more love, better friendships, greater health, more happiness, feeling, feeling more alive, feeling more abundant, feeling the prosperity of the healthy food that you have access to and like wanting to move your body and and dance and make love and, and like, yeah, money too. Sure. But, but, you know, manifesting the opportunities or the connections, like, you know, my book comes out next January and I, I got an amazing agent and I got exactly the publisher that I wanted. I was like, I want to be a Hay House author, you know, and everybody in the spiritual community says that, like, I wanted to do it. And my, my agent, you know, I was leaving for Antarctica and she finally sent the proposal out. And she was like, just so you know, this takes a month. Like, I can't believe you're going to be in Antarctica. You need to get a satellite phone. I need to be able to get a hold of you. And I was like, listen, I promise you that we're going to get a deal before I leave for Antarctica. She's like, that doesn't happen. That's 10 days from now. It doesn't happen. It's impossible. I'm like, just trust me. Okay. <laughs> I'm rich. I trust myself. I know that this is going to happen. And it did. And it did. Wow. And it was a miracle. And it's those things like that, that we, when we trust ourselves and when we know our alignment there really isn't like we were talking about about at the beginning, there isn't really anything to resist. Even if something like doesn't happen the way you think it's going to, you're like, okay, well, that's fine. I'll, I'll figure out something else. We just had, you know, anyways, I have a whole nother story about that, but, but it's just so, it's so powerful. And that's what I am so focused on and passionate about right now is like, what does it mean to really have power? Because we're living in a world and a society where the opposite of power is what's being presented as power. It's, it's scarcity. It's not enoughness. It's, you know, like suppressing people, oppressing people, repressing our emotions and our, and our beauty and our magic. And that's what has become like success and, and influence in the world. And it's just so upside down. And so when we reclaim the true nature of power, which is in all of these elements is in the universe all around us. I I believe that that's what's shifting the balance in the world. And so that's why it's, it's just like, so my mission right now is to support people in really, truly reclaiming all of their power so that you can make anything and everything happen. And that ultimately then the people who have found the true nature of power can be the new leaders, leave a new legacy and rebuild the kind of earth and world and society that we actually all want to live in. Mm, yes. That's why we need money in the right hands. The one. With Hallelujah. The good- <laughs> yeah. Oh, I loved it. Thank you so much for sharing your magic. That was amazing. Yeah. And 
before we close this interview, I would love to know for those who, who are like, what is this program about that she's talking about? What can women expect by joining what it's going to be? Like, can you maybe share one example of the tools you're using in it? Um, yeah. Right no. Yeah. So it's going to be, I, I work with my one-on-one -on -one clients for three months. So that's like the container of total personal transformation. And I worked with my team to figure out, okay, how can I offer the same level of transformation that I give to my one-on-one -on -one clients in a container of a group? And so it's daily and weekly practices and rituals. And like one of the ones that I love is from a, a beautiful elder of the Lakota tribe. And this is a, an elemental way to start your day. This is just one simple practice and it's charging yourself up with the energies of the sun through your seven chakras, scooping them into your crown, letting it drip all the way down. And like one of my greatest skills in magic is leading people into trance state and, and, you know, like putting you in the vibe. And so working with the elements like that, filling yourself with the this sunlight with this power, right? That is like the transformative energy. It is fire. It's, it's our will. It's the, the, the sacral or excuse me, the solar plexus chakra. And so every day for a week, you're doing this sun practice. Then we have, um, a beautiful breast massage. One of the things that I, I lead in my retreats is a breath work breast massage that becomes like a full heart exorcism and, or heartgasm kind of like, depending on where you're at in your healing <laughs> and what you need, you know? Um, and so there'll be one week where it's a guided breast massage practice. And so it's, it's lots of video content that you can watch. Um, it's a really choose your own adventure experience because one of the things that I know from leading programs is like, some people are busier than others. Some people want more homework. Some people are moms and don't have time. And so the basis of the program will be coach live coaching with me, rituals with me, and this practice that you'll be invited to do every day. But then if you want to go deeper, there's like, here's these five other practices. Here's all these videos about these different topics that if you want to go further in and you want to practice, you know, speaking uh, this particular way or singing this particular mantra every day or doing eye gazing every day in addition to X, Y, or Z. So it's, it's pretty in depth. It's a lot of, it's a lot of practices and a lot of rituals together and a lot of like one-on-one -on -one coaching with me in the group. Um, but the, but the foundational element of it is working through the elements. So it'll be all five elements and then voice, pleasure, heart, different parts of our body, the ways of expressing ourselves. And every week there'll be just one required practice that I know that if you do that, it doesn't have to be every day, but maybe like four days in the week that at the end of those three months, you'll be a completely different person and you will feel like a sorceress. You will feel your power rising up into you and filling you so that then that fulfillment, right? You don't, you don't need anything. It's all just a bonus. It's all just like, oh, great. Like I have this amazing love within myself. Attracting the perfect partner to love me is a bonus. I feel this beauty within myself. Having people reflect beauty back to me is just a bonus. I feel abundant. I feel feel safe. Okay. Well, here's the perfect home that allows me to feel safe. Here's the amount of money that I was calling in in order to invest the way I want in order to create the life that I want. So it's, I'm like super excited about it. I can't wait because I'm going to be offering, uh, you know, this program coming soon and, um, and to be able to, yeah, do these practices again as well myself and, and really regimented like that is I'm, I'm like, Oh, cool. Who am I going to become also? This is great. Mm. Yeah, I love so coming it. early 2023 and there is a, a page we can link it here. I'll send you the link um, to get on the wait list and, and to sign up if anybody feels called to do that. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Thank you for sharing your magic with the world and with me today. And I have one last question. If you could travel back in time and tell young Mia something you've learned along your journey, what would you tell her? that everything I read about in my books, all the fantasies that I thought I needed to escape into are actually accessible right here, right now, all the time. And they're not outside of me. They're not in my books. They're all around me. The gift, mm. the magic, the power, the witch, witchcraft and wizardry, it's all real. 
And anyone who tells you it isn't is just a muggle. They don't know. They're just, <laughs> they're just living in a world where they don't know. And it's okay and have compassion for those people. But you are a witch. You are a wise woman. You are a wizard. You are a magical being. And mm. your life, your life deserves you in devotion to that magic. Mm. We should teach that in school, how to stay in your truth. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what I'm doing. That's what my retreats are all about is like spending a week at Hogwarts and I'm in the process of looking at castles to buy to have a, a long-term standing brick and mortar school, like real life Hogwarts, we're doing it. <laughs> wow. So um, so yeah, in process, coming, coming as soon as possible. <laughs> oh my God, I loved it so much. Thank you so much, Mia, for today. Yeah, thank you, love. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed this amazing conversation as much as I did. I loved having Mia and her magic on the show. And like I said, the mastermind is open for applications. If this is calling your name, also check out Mia's profile, her Instagram. She shares a lot of wisdom that is very activating and remembering on her Instagram. Her upcoming offer is um, coming up soon as well so make sure to follow her to join the waitlist and as always if this in interview inspired you I would love for you to leave a review on the Apple podcast or on Spotify it's just one click to to leave your stars on the Apple podcast it takes maybe 30 seconds it helps the podcast grow to share this magic share this episode with someone who might need to hear it that's maybe in a lack mentality right now or is going through a hard time to get some advice from a real, real rich, real witch. <laughs> And as always, I see you next week.